What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. This video is all about my one year review of this phone, the Pixel 6 Pro. I've had this phone for basically almost a year. It came out in October. I'm recording this at the end of September and I switched back to it recently because my Galaxy Z Fold 4 has an issue with the display and I've sent that off to Samsung. So for the last three, four days, I've been using this phone exclusively as my main phone and I wanted to talk about it because, you know, when I first got the phone, there was a lot of things I really liked about it to the point where I almost gave the thought of like, you know what, do I wanna to switch to this phone? I ultimately did not and I'll give you a little teaser and you probably, if you know me, you know why I didn't switch over to it. It's because it's just a slab phone. It's just, which, you know, a lot of people, the majority of people, I should say, love slab phones. I'm on the on the other side. I love foldable uh, phones. I love these huge, huge displayed phones. Um, but again, I moved back to, so it's, I thought I'd give you my thoughts on, you know, maybe you're a person that has a folding phone, you're thinking about going back to a slab phone, or maybe you just want to know about the Pixel 6 Pro. So I'm going to give you all of my thoughts on that. Without further ado, let's jump into this. So first of all, let's go through some of my gripes about this phone from the past. Um, one being the fingerprint sensor. Um, fingerprint sensor has been massively improved with Android 13. It works so well. I've got the Android 13 update for, I don't know, a few, I had the beta. Once I hit the beta, it was like, the fingerprint issues of this not really, to my standards anyway, working really all that well, way improved. Much more fast, much more reliable. That is the big key, way more reliable. So if you had concerns about the fingerprint sensor because it's underneath the display, it's really, really good. Um, again, I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, one of the other things, the display not, display not getting so bright outdoors, Obviously, you. I don't know if they could, maybe they could fix it. I don't think they could though, um, with a software update. It just doesn't get as bright as I would want. Still, even outdoors, um, I don't want to turn it too, up, too high up because there's no point right now, but ultimately, it just doesn't get bright enough. This is at 60% or so right now, the brightness, and uh, it just doesn't get to the point when, especially when I'm outdoors, if I'm in a sunny area, I'll be honest, I can barely see it. But with that said, keep in mind that a bright display or like what I think is bright and what you think is bright is totally within our own minds. You know, I love a, like a Samsung bright display and this just doesn't get that bright. So that's still an issue for me. I really hope they fix it on the 7 and the 7 Pro. There's rumors that they are gonna fix that or improve it, I should say, maybe not fix it. So I hope they do, but that is, again, one of the things that kind of bugged me about it. Also, for some reason, and I think it's built into the software for prolonging the battery health, is that charging just feels kind of slow on there. I believe it's 24 watts fast charging. If I'm wrong, I'll put it in the, a little title on there, but it just feels a little bit slower than most of the other phones I used um, on the Android side. So kind of a downer in that regard, but you know, when I go to bed and I wake up, was it fully charged? Yes, but in a pinch, you know, uh, not that great with the fast charging, a little bit underwhelming, but I would admit the battery life overall, um, I was getting better battery life on this versus the Z Fold 4. Um, I would get to a point where like, you know, I'd wake up really early in the morning because I was using this mostly in Los Angeles when I was at a, uh, an event with uh, TCL and I would use this all day long <clears throat> and then I'd say around, maybe I came back to the room around 5 or 6 p.m. I would recharge it. I wouldn't need to recharge it. I would still have like 30 or 40 percent. I probably, you know, if I, you know, didn't go too crazy until the end of the night, which would have been like, you know, 10 p.m. or so, I probably would have been fine not having to charge it. But I like mentally to be like at 60, 70, 80 or higher percent if I'm gonna be out for a prolonged time. So battery life, I was very, very happy with this. And you know, everything from taking photos and videos and just using it to look up stuff and emails and stuff like that, it was great. So I, I have no problems with battery life. I was pretty impressed with it. Jumping back to the display, this being a slab phone and coming from a, ta a, a phablet, a tablet, a, 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 a big screen phone like the Z Fold 4. I will admit it's kind of difficult to go back to something like this in terms of viewing stuff and reading stuff. My eyesight as I've gotten older hasn't been so great. So reading text on here, um, especially if I'm just kind of like, you know, I've got like, for instance, I have this up right here. 
I can I can read it, but if it's you know moving around a little bit, say I'm on and like we were on a bus a couple times, um, reading this was kind of hard. I'd have to you know pinch in to read it because I want it to be bigger, and I know I can increase the font size, but ultimately when you do that, it changes the look of the phone. It, everything comes too big and just too much. So um, that is one thing. It's hard to go back to something like this, watching videos. Um, you know, if you're used to a slab phone, uh, a phone like this, you're not gonna be bothered by that, but coming from a folding phone, going back to this is really quite difficult to do something like that. Um, so I, I would have to give it a little bit of a downer on that point, but ultimately it's still, if you're used to it, I think you'll be happy with it. It was, uh, but yeah, it's okay. Also the quality of the display, it's not bad, but it's just not up to say like a Samsung standard display. I look at this and it's like, I feel like, and I think I said this in my initial review too, and I, I reviewed it you know, a year ago, it just doesn't have that same panel quality, at least in my eyes. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just don't see it. It's, it's something that I look at a Samsung display, it's so crisp and clear, and this, I don't know what it is. It's clear, it's somewhat crisp, it just doesn't, it feels like a lesser version. Like, so if a Samsung display is an A, this feels like a, like in terms of the quality of the look of it, I'd say like a B, if that makes sense. Like just a step down in that regard, but still very, very, you know, pretty good display overall in terms of the quality of it. The software on here is, I love it. It's like, it's so much, smoother and faster than a Samsung phone because that's generally what I use. So like on the Android side, if you're living in America, you know, most people on the Android side, I feel like either buy the majority of people, if again, on the Android side, buy a Google phone or a Samsung phone. I mean, there'll be the rare occasion someone will buy some other phone, but ultimately those are the two phones. And this phone just feels on a day-to-day -day basis, feels smoother, you know, when you use it. And I love that. Um, I didn't have any bug issues. That was a, a thing that, you know, people were complaining about initially when the phone came out. Like, I have this bug, I have this bug, I have this bug. And the things that I was using with it, from photos, to web browsing, to watching videos, to playing, I didn't really play any games. Just using it, social media, anything like that, didn't really have any problems on it. I love the, the, uh, the, the gestures are very smooth, very, very smooth. So if you're using the gestures, you can do that. I like on the slab phones, I actually like using the gestures on here versus the buttons at the bottom on the slab phones. So software and the UI is so smooth, so fast, beautiful. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to switch from Samsung to over to something like this because it feels fresh and fast. And not that Samsung doesn't feel fast, but this just feels faster. It's, it's a nice, nice experience. It's a very pleasurable experience. Speakers, I was impressed with. I, they, they, they're, not, they're not the loudest, uh, they're not the most bassy, but overall, they're good, solid speakers. You can definitely hear what's going on. It's a good quality sound overall, so I was very, very happy with the speakers. Cameras, this is a, you know, this is a big thing, you know? You got cameras on the front, cameras on the, uh, cameras on the back, cameras on the front, like a, any normal phone you would have. And I always say it, you, if you follow me, you know, I'm like, you know, if I am gonna take a photo of people or, a, uh, or pretty much anything that moves, that would be an animal or anything, I wanna use a Pixel phone and I'm so, you know, if my phone's gonna break, I'm loving that I'm able to take this phone because it's, I love taking photos with this Pixel phone. It's very, very good. Uh, I got some, you know, pretty good photos of uh, other creators and, um, you know, capturing a quick video or two with it. So I was overall very, very happy with it. That experience has not changed in terms of me being happy and then unhappy. Overall, I was just extremely pleased with the photos and the videos from here. Uh, they still do a great, fantastic job and it's still my go-to phone. If I'm taking pictures of people, um, I'm almost, especially if this phone is nearby and charged up and ready to go, I'm using a Pixel. So with the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro around the corner, it begs the question, you know, is it worth it to upgrade? Obviously I can't answer that just yet because I don't have the Pixel 7 or 7 Pro in hand to compare this against. But you know, if you, if you are thinking about buying this phone and you're getting like a crazy deal or you know, you just wanna get this phone, you don't wanna wait for the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, you're gonna be happy with it. There's, there's there, you know, no phone's perfect. There's a couple of things like I mentioned that might turn you a little bit off, but ultimately it's a great experience and it's very fluid and um, things that maybe have, that you read about previously seemingly are fixed, you know. Obviously, 
you can't fix the, the screen brightness, I don't think, anyway, with a software update. But you know, again, screen brightness is all relative. You might not think it is, I might think it is, so it, vice versa. But check it out, guys. Still a very, very good phone. Um, one of the best phones you can still get at this moment in time. Um, you won't be disappointed, I don't think, if you pick it up. If you have a Pixel phone, especially in the 6 or 6 Pro, let us know your thoughts. Do you still love it? Do you hate it? Put it in the comments down below. Have a great day, and we'll see you down the road. Peace.